Hi everyone, and you're welcome to the Studying Journalism module, JOUR4050. So this week is our first week, and um, I'll be talking to you about journalism, democracy, and the fourth estate. So most importantly, let's have a look at the outline. So today, I'll be talking to you about journalism, its relationship in democracy, and of course, what it has to do with power. Defining the fourth estate is another concept we're going to be considering. And we'll also look at the contemporary fourth estate with the perspective of evaluation. So a quick one into the background. Now, this is a story that alludes to um, power, authority, and uh, what it has to do with democracy. Now we had King Charles the First. He was a ruler at the time, but the parliament, the political class, believes he was doing something contrary to what was right and it was not doing good for the public. So what happened? It was executed. Now, in this sense, we can say that the parliament acted on behalf of the people because democracy is a system of government where the interests of the people are represented in the parliament. To read more about the story, click the link in blue. So let's take a look at this freedom, equality, and of course, what it has to do with journalism. Journalism based on certain theory, that is the social responsibility theory and freedom of the media, we believe that the media should be free, meaning voices should be and opinions should be added to media platform. A logic of equivalence is also prevailing in this sense. And we can see even in the case of King Charles the First that it was a revolutionary move. Where on earth have we ever had that the king, which is presumed after God, be executed? This is what democracy can bring, democratic revolution. Well, journalism enabled the spread of um, revolutionary ideas through the power of communication. And this is formed through political, collective political consciousness. In that sense, the execution wouldn't have been possible if the public didn't support the idea because it was the public one. Democracy is formed by our communicative capacity. So what we communicate determine how we are understood. What the public express will determine what decisions will be taken and what will become the popular opinion. And the types of media that exist in different political settings are varied from one country to the other. And most importantly, the media takes the form of the society where they operate in. Now, let's move on. Let's define democracy. We have basic concept and idea of what democracy is, but it's also very important that we re-examine and be sure that we're on the same page. Democracies of the people, by the people, and for the people. And democracy is a particular system of government and which empowers the right of the people, which strengthen their voice. That is the assumption, meaning the representation should be solely 
of that. So it should be solely that of the people's ideal. Now, <clears throat> in a political system where people's voice are not considered, their opinion are not heard, then that doesn't qualify as democracy. From this definition, we can say democracy is all about the people because it is of them, by them and for them. The principle of democracy is operational even in schools, at workplaces, institutions, because you don't want to force people who are not in an autocratic system, not even a fascist state. This we discuss during our physical meeting and we give a series of examples to explain this idea. And now what are we talking about? Democratic principles upholds freedom. It helps the public be informed and it expresses the view without limitation because this is all about the light. Let's take a look at what these principles include. They include equal rights, especially the rights to express your opinion. And such opinions are evaluated on the basis of merits. Majority decision making is very important, although some limitations have been that it slows decision making process. And let's consider some of the form of power that exists. We have the legitimate power, economic powers, which are commercial, political power, the state, coercive power, and symbolic power. The power of media and communication is, of course, symbolic because it is all about the cultural institutions. The cultural institutions are otherwise called the cultural industry. What are they? They are the media. The film industry, the entertainment industry. Why? Because culture means what's a way of life. And this industry reflects and mirrors life. At the primary level, remember that literature is the mirror of the society and the media is a reflection of literature and if the media is reflecting the, the society then we can be sure that of course they are interpreting mirroring cultures so we call them cultural institutions and that is why the media has also been attributed the power of preserving cultures and of course, transferring cultures from one generation to the other. How does power work? They work at different levels. And this could be structurally, institutionally, it could be at interpersonal level. But first, let me just give you this. The levels are intrapersonal, interpersonal, group, could be, it could be small group, larger group, and we have that of the mass communication, which journalism is all about. All of these are structures. The only one that is not institutional could be intrapersonal. But interpersonal communication can also be institutional. Imagine a boss worker relationship, the top bottom relationship. In this instance, we could have even colleagues relationship. That of the boss um, worker relationship could be called the vertical and the horizontal is a colleague relationship. Now, power is not just a negative phenomenon that is imposed oppressively, but it's relational. It enables activities, it enables situation, it gives chances for everything to happen. Now, this power can be abused. Hence, the need to look for a way to work and manage power. And of course, power is linked to knowledge. What is the interlink between power and knowledge? You must have heard the maxim knowledge is power knowledge is power yes when you know you have the power 
to use such knowledge for your own benefit. When you don't know, you are denied. Still on power works. Now, democratic freedom should not be contrasted against exercise of power. The question is, what is democratic freedom? Freedom of expression, freedom of association, freedom of opinion, movements, and more. But it must not be contrasted against the exercise of power. Remember, democracy remains a form of government. Let's move on. The fourth estate. Now we're going deeper into what we need to know. What is the fourth estate? The fourth estate is the term linked to Edmund Bonk. Edmund Bonk he is uh, a writer, an artist, a creative person. Uh, then, of course, he noted that the fourth estates are those group of people who are able to hold the first three organs of the government responsible. And in this sense, we add the Lord spirituals, the Lord's temporal and the commons. And the assumption of the fourth estate is that there is need to diffuse the power of governments. There is need to checkmate this power of governments. And how do we do this? Through education, through representative. Representative in the sense that the media should advocate for the people. Educational, the media should allow for a platform where public issues can be debated. Hence, the public sphere attributed to Jogin Habermas. Now, let's move on. What exactly is contemporary evaluation of public sphere? How does it exist today? It exists as a form of social responsibility, which is supported by the social responsibility for, um, theory of the media, of journalism, of communication, and ethics, professional values. And these are the, 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 the ethical or kind of uh, ideological background that supports the idea of what estates. And the emphasis include Ensuring that in your journalism, writing or activities, your professional and your fair, your balance, objective, you are independent and you are ensuring that there is a full disclosure of information, keeping nothing outside. There is no conflict of interest. The sources of your information are revealed. Diversities of opinions are expressed and the forum for discussion of public issues are allowed. And of course, the media remain the vehicle for expressing the people's voice, especially to their political leaders. Let's have a look. Take a look at these images. Right above, we've got the Prime Minister Boris Johnson, the ex-Prime Minister, as it is. And um, we see adverts even on our right hand side, commercialization. Now, commercialization is one of those development that has led to what's dumping down and that's also led to clamp down on the fourth estate's idea. The media needs to survive. Then, as they are, contra they are compromising their responsibility of holding government and economic forces to account for power that is within their within their, their 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 domain because they need to carry adverts they need to get adverts they need to be to be economically relevant and take a look at this the headline below the bbc is failing in its obligation to be fair this is a bbc journalist and he is saying this, 
it's a fourth estate kind of thing. This is the way it exists. On your social media, expressions of how things are not going well, or report on developments that holds or call power public office holders to account for what they are doing. Emphasize the idea of public of, of, of the fourth estate. So what exactly is commercialization? Commercialization is the commoditization of news. It emphasizes dumping down. It talks about the involvement and relationship between the power and of course the media. And it also talks about the emphasis on the drive for profit. Why the interest of the media is tilted towards making profits rather than providing quality content for the creator. Contemporary, still on contemporary fourth estate. The case of Iraq war shows an evidence of such. So victims of increasingly sophisticated government communications tends to cry out and it emphasizes the fourth estate ideal. And when journalists become part of the political elite, this affects the fourth estate ideal to an extent. However, this same power can be used positively for the benefit of the public. So reinforcing institutional, like monarchy, as we have it here, and ideal. Of fourth estates. We have people who have been victim, of course, of these examples. So the idea of fourth estate is captured in practice of investigative journalism, where journalists have to go undercover to ensure So I believe you have been well introduced to the idea of fourth estate journalism and of course what I works in democracy. We intend to keep this short because this is a catch up lecture if you miss the physical session. Thank you guys. And if you've got questions, feel comfortable to share, ask. I'll be in the Teams chat responding to all of your questions. Thank you and have a good day.